Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I like to do is show you how to factor um, out your GCF. Now, the, you know, the best way I figured I could do this is obviously go through a couple examples. And again, when we're looking into factoring your GCF, there's a couple things we need to understand. First of all, whenever I say factoring, what you want to do is think about rewriting your expression as a product, right? As the multiplication of two factors, two numbers that evenly divide into your expression. The second thing is GCF. Anytime you think about GCF, you think the greatest common factor. Okay, so what is the greatest number that is going to divide? Um, greatest number that's going to divide into your term or um, expression. So, a lot of times um, when we're factoring is until you get a lot of times we can do a lot of the stuff in our head and kind of go through some steps. But I'm going to break it down nice and slow for you for each of these problems so you can kind of get a basic idea of why exactly what we're doing. Um, so, for instance, uh, let's just kind of look at a number again real quick. So let's look at the number six. Well, the number six we can rewrite as two factors would be three times two, right? But let's say I let's say I knew three was a factor. I knew three divided into six, but for some reason I could not remember uh, how many times three goes into six. So if I said if I divided six divided by three, that equals two. So I take whatever number I divide into um, my term, and then whatever my quotient is, and I can say three times two is equal to 6. All right, And that's going to kind of get into our ways what we're going to uh, be looking in here, which I'll use back now with some expressions. So when we're factoring on GCF, what we want to do um, to kind of get a basic understanding is factor each of your terms. So 3x is actually prime. Um, the, only two not, the only two factors that give me 3 are uh, 3 and 1. The only two factors that give me x are x and 1. So I can't do anything with 3x. However, 6y, I can factor 6 into 3 times 2 times y. And what you see is I have a common factor of 3. And that is the largest of my common factors. So just like I did with number 6, I know that 3 is one of my factors. right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide each term by 3. And my answer I get is 2, which is my other product, which is my other factor. Well, here, I'm not dealing with numbers. 3x divided by 3, that just leaves me with x. 3 times 2y divided by 3 just leaves me with a positive 2y. So my x plus 2y kind of acts as like my 2 here. But remember, the factoring of 6 is 3 times 2. So therefore, since I divided by 3, that's what I'm going to multiply by. So it's 3 times x plus 2y. Um, so now let's go and look at when they have common variables, right? So now that's the numbers. A lot of students get the numbers. They, um, they like numbers. They can factor and divide them out, and it makes a little bit more sense. Here, uh, a lot of students get a little tripped up because they always kind of forget, you know, how do you get x squareds and so forth. So again, let's just factor them. Well, 2x is prime. I cannot factor 2x. Same reasons why 3x is prime. However, 3x squared is not prime because I can factor x squared. I can rewrite x squared as a product of its factors of x times x, right? So 3 times x times x. And then again, just like we did before, we see that there is a common factor. And that common factor is x. So since we know x is a factor, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by x. And when I take x squared divided by x, I'm just left with x. These are my two factors, right? So I'm going to divide each term by x. And when doing that, I'm left with 2 plus 3x. That's one factor, right, my quotient. And then my other factor is what I divided by, which was x. OK? And a lot of times when we're thinking about that, we kind of say like divide out or factor out. And really, basically, what you're doing is just dividing. Um, so now let's go and look into ones that are going to be a little bit more complicated, right? Um, so you know, basically with this, it, it's really just how much practice you get with this. I mean, I can go through this, break this down step by step, which I'm going to. Um, but I can also do this very easily in my head, um, just kind of showing. And actually, what I'll do is I will show you in my head real quick. And then I'll just do the breakdown. So if you don't want to watch the whole thing, uh, I, won't, I won't take too long. But here, I notice that the greatest common factor of my numbers is 4. So I factor out my number 4. The greatest power of my variable x's is just x. Oh, what am I doing? 
And the greatest common variable or power of my y variable is y to the third. So that's what I'm going to factor out. And when I factor out a 4 from 4, I have 1. When I factor out an x from x squared, I'm left with x. A y cubed from y cubed is just going to be 1. So I have x minus a uh, factor of 4 from negative 16, I have a negative 4. Uh, an x from x is just left with 1. And a y cubed from a y fourth is just y. All right. Now, I kind of went through that quickly. You might have been like, what the heck did you do? So if you get stuck or you don't understand, factor each one of these. So factoring 4 could be 2 times 2 times x times x times y times y times y minus um, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 um, times x times y times y times y times y, right? So I broke this down as a list of its factors, right, of its prime factors. And then there's kind of like this separating point, all right? So now just circle what they have in common. Well, and here they have two twos. Two twos, two x's. Oops, I don't have two x's over here. So I can only circle one x that they have in common. Okay, And then they have three y's. And here I have three y's. Okay, So when I divide, so when I divide each of these by you know, 2 times 2 times x times y times y times y, and here 2 times 2 times y times y times y, well, obviously, those are going to divide out. That's going to divide out Oops, and times x. Um, my x's divide out, y's, y's, y's. And what am I left with? I'm only left with one x, right? x minus, those divide out, those divide out, those divide all to 1. Here I'm left with 2 times 2, which is 4, 4y. Four, um, which you can see, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly what I had here. And then what I divided by, I'm going to put on the outside as my other factor, 4xy cubed. OK. And lastly, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to try to do this one quickly just to get this video over with. Um, you can see here, a lot of students will make the mistake is they'll want to factor out an A. And that's why I did this problem. Because you think you want to factor an A, but the problem is, yeah, here's an A. Yeah, here's A squared. But here, there's no A. So you cannot factor out. It's not a common factor amongst all of the terms. All right. The only common factor I see amongst every single one of these terms is 2. But is 2 really the largest factor? I can divide 2 into each one of these, correct? But remember, we want to look at the greatest common factor. So the greatest number that divides into each of my numbers, I would say it would be 10. So I'm going to divide 10, or factor 10 out. They don't all share an a squared, so I cannot factor out an a, an a. But I can factor out a b, as they all share a b. So I factor out 10b. And when I divide a 10b from each of my terms, what I'm left with is a minus 2a squared plus 3. And I cannot combine those anymore. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is your basic way to be able to factor using the um, factoring out the greatest common factor. Thanks.